Hello and welcome to part 3 of my video series, Tracing Without Tears. If you've not already watched the first two videos, I encourage you to do so. I know you're anxious to get to more complex traces, but we're building our knowledge step by step and I don't want you to miss anything. In the first video, we talked about using solid images instead of line art to avoid double lines. But today we're going to focus on when you have to or want to trace line art, or really more about what to do with it after we trace it. The first and easiest case we're going to look at is when you want to turn line art into a layered image where you'll be placing colored pieces of paper or vinyl on top of a shadowed background or mat, which is usually black or white. For this kind of project, we want to start out with something that has medium to thick outlines. The ever popular Hello Kitty designs with their chunky outlines are perfect for demonstrating this. The trace itself is simple. We keep the defaults, but I still want you to stay in the habit of turning off the high pass filter. Okay, so just like before, we're going to drag away the bitmap, delete it, select our trace, select Release Compound Path. Remember, we can do that with right-clicking or from the Object menu. Then we're going to begin coloring our pieces. In this case, I like to take the outline and just go ahead and move it out of the way, color it black, then I can move it back and forth for reference. Now remember, we're just the coloring is for our benefit only. Your silhouette's colorblind it's going to cut these out of whatever colors of paper you have underneath. But unless you're going to print and cut, this is just uh, for our benefit. I want to point out one more thing. If, let's say, instead of cutting these eyes out of black paper, we want to just cut holes out so that they'll show through the white. So let me color this white and then show you what I mean. Okay, so if we select the eyes, the bigger piece, the outer part of the nose, and then make compound path. These are now holes in the bigger piece and you can do that anytime you want to cut holes and that just simplifies your assembly when you go to do your paper piecing. Either as you're coloring or afterwards you want to group pieces of the same color together and you can do this by holding down the shift key as you select subsequent pieces and then you can group with control or command G or this group button. For the sake of time I've already colored this image and grouped the colored pieces together so I can show you what we do next. This assembled version might come in handy so I'm going to make a copy and drag it off the mat for safekeeping. Okay so we can drag to separate our different colors and at this point we have several choices of how we're going to do this and it just depends on how big your project is and your personal preference. Here we see we've got six colors. Our first option is to load the mat with swatches of color using the mat lines as guide and place the pieces on top of the corresponding parts on the mat. I've drawn this illustration to show you what that might look like. It's kind of tedious but it is one option and it saves on paper. Another option is use the cut styles window to toggle on and off the different pieces. So if we just wanted to cut the green, for instance, we would turn off all the other pieces, set them off to no cut, and that would leave just our green. And then when we're done with the green, we would turn it off and turn on the next color. A variation on that is just to drag the items we don't want to cut off the mat. So when I'm cutting the black, I just drag everything else off the mat. When I'm done with the black, I drag the next color on and so forth. Another way to do this is to save each color as a separate file. Silhouette Studio has a special menu command that's helpful for this. Select the color or group you want for the new file. Then choose File, Save Selection. Give it a name and click OK. Now we can open that document and see that it just includes that one color. It's helpful to put all these in one folder so you can find them the next time you go to do your project. So how you do that is just personal preference. That's how you would cut the different layers. So that's our example of paper piecing with the background. But you can also do paper piecings without borders where the pieces fit together like a puzzle. To do this, it's best to start out with line art that has thin to medium lines, like this owl that we'll be using as our example. When we trace for this effect, we want to bring the threshold down as low as possible 
and still not get broken lines. This makes the outline as thin as possible. Again, we're going to release our compound path. And I'm going to zoom in here. And we're going to start removing the outer lines. It helps to zoom in and also to click just outside the lines. So we're going to get all of the places that are double lines. We're usually going to go to the outermost line. I didn't there by the feet, but in all the other cases we're going to take the outermost line. And you can see there I'm clicking just outside. I find to be the easiest way. Okay, and then we can begin our coloring like we did in the last example. Now I've already done that for the sake of time. Here's what our owl looks like, all colored, and that looks pretty good. But you can see if we zoom in, that we do have some small gaps. Depending on the size of your project and other factors, you may be willing to live with that, in which case we'd separate the pieces like we did for the Hello Kitty trace. But if you want to close the gap, you can do that using the offset tool. You can do more than one piece at a time, but not if they're adjacent because the offset tool automatically welds the pieces together and we want them to stay separate. I'll show you how we do one piece of the wing as an example. So if we want to close this gap here, we select this piece, go to offset, I'm always going to just bring this to zero and then start clicking upward. And I'm watching this red, where the red line meets the brown. And where that looks good, I'm going to click Apply. Okay, then I'm going to remove the inner piece and then recolor the outer piece. So I would do that for each piece until I closed all the gaps. So after we're done offsetting all the pieces, we would separate them to cut as just like we did with the Hello Kitty. Now on to the last type of line art that we're going to cover today. One of the most common and the most frustrating types of line art you'll want to trace is paper crafting templates. If the template is in a PDF, it may already be a vector so that you won't have to trace it. I have a separate video on this, so you might want to check that out before you spend a lot of time tracing templates. Here's a typical file from a popular template site. When we trace it, we get double lines, and these dashed lines turn into rounded rectangles or just a mess. So this isn't going to work. But what you'll notice about this template is that really it's only the outer shape that's complicated. The rest is just straight lines. So what we're going to do is trace just the outer edge. Okay, so if I move this away, you can see that I've just traced the outer edge. Now I can use the line tool to go in and add the lines. Click, hold down the shift key and drag to do a horizontal or vertical line. In the middle here we could do a rectangle. and we go on doing line by line. And then we would either set those to dashed lines or group them together if we wanted to score in a separate pass. So for the sake of time I've already finished that and here's what the finished template with cut lines looks like. It takes a little time up front but we'll have a crisp accurate template from, to use from now on. Also note that many templates need to be cut at an exact size. So be sure to verify that your template is correctly sized before cutting. Or you can use the grid on your screen or draw temporary lines to help you verify that the template on your screen matches the cut size you want. So we've seen today how to trace various kinds of line art and what to do with those traces so that they're usable after we get done. Thanks for watching, for subscribing, and for telling others about this series. Your kind comments mean a lot to me, so thanks for letting me hear from you.